Greetings! I'm Mike Teitelbaum. This is the second video on the topic of jazz improvisation using simple melodic embellishment. If you haven't yet watched the first video, Good Neighbors, I encourage you to start with that one, because that video sets the table for the exercises here. In that video, I said that one way to conceive of improvisation is to start with very simple melodies and embellishing them. Therefore, we need to have a song which will be the foundation of our embellishment practice. Today, for that foundation, we'll learn the wonderfully simple tune, When the Saints Go Marching In. We'll learn the melody orally, then do several exercises, then end by improvising in a very targeted way with precise improvisational goals in mind. For this video, specifically, we'll be varying the rhythms of the song. In order for the exercises to work, we need to have When the Saints Go Marching In so thoroughly learned that we just exude it. This level of knowledge begins with memorizing the song, but improvising around that song requires deeper learning than just memorization. It's internalization. Internalizing a song means that you no longer even need to think about whether or not you have it memorized. It's just part of your subconscious musical vocabulary. Let's start by clarifying the process of learning a song, because there isn't just one way to learn, and the type of song it is impacts the primary source for study. If you're learning great American songbook tunes by composers like Cole Porter or Harry Warren, the primary source is the original published sheet music. In my home, we've accumulated a lot of composer songbooks. If you're studying tunes by amazing recording artists like Herbie Hancock or Horace Silver, the primary sources are their own recordings, so the best method is to learn their tunes by ear or perhaps transcribe them directly from their recordings. If you're learning early songs where the composer is not known, then you have to dig, researching a range of recordings, books, or websites to find the most authentic sources. The origins of When the Saints Go Marching In are not fully known, so I think of it in this last category. I listen to many recordings by different performers to learn the melody. I'll start by singing along with my students in the Ithaca College Jazz Ensemble. Here's how it goes. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. Sing along. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, how I want to be in that number when the saints go. Now to learn it on your instrument. If you're a singer, make sure to have an instrument ready to go. Even a simple piano app on your phone is better than skipping this exercise. Rather than reading it from sheet music, I want to exercise your oral skills first. Oral, aural, aural, aural. Learning melodies orally helps build a sense of relative pitch. One exercise I do with my students is to apply oral skills to their instrument by pointing to numbers or solfege referring to notes of a scale, or scale degrees. This is ultimately how we will learn to play when the saints go marching in on our instruments. I'd like you to practice this little game in concert F major. Of course, if you play an E-flat instrument, that would be D. If you play a B-flat instrument, that would be G. I'll show you numbers and solfege in this little number clicker app that I made. F will be 1, G is a 2, A is 3, and so on. Okay, ready? Let's play. <laughs> See how it works? Okay, now I'm going to skip around a little bit.
Okay, now I'm going to do when the saints go marching in on numbers. Keep playing the scale degrees as I click them. Think you got the sequence learned? Let's do it in rhythm. One, two, three, four, one. Did you memorize the sequence yet? If not, scroll back and do it a few more times. It's the sequence of numbers or solfege symbols that's really important because that's how we really internalize a song. And it's the sequence that you use to play a song in all 12 keys. More on that in the future. The rhythmic embellishment exercises we're going to do require the melody to move no faster than half notes. Those are minims if you're British. So we're going to distill the melody down to an even simpler version. Once distilled, all the note lengths become half notes or whole notes, and all the pitches will be chord tones. This will become even more important when we practice melodic embellishment. This is what the distilled version of the Saints melody looks like. I want you to play along, so here's a scrolling version. Again, notice there are separate transposed lines for B-flat, E-flat, and bass clef instruments. One, two, three, four. Is this distilled version of the melody a little unexciting? Yeah, it is, because we need it to be. It needs to be simple yet recognizable, so we can practice embellishing it in an organized way. We're going to add several syncopation patterns to this distilled melody. In the opening bar, instead of playing two half notes, we'll change it to add this little syncopation, and we'll anticipate the next melody note, like this. We'll apply the syncopation to the entire distilled melody using the same pattern every time, changing the rhythm of each measure that has half notes. Be sure to keep the distilled melody in your head while you play or sing this variation. The original notes from that distilled melody are circled. Okay, here we go. Play or sing along. One, two, three, four. Now, we'll practice the distilled melody again, but reverse the pattern by placing a similar syncopation on the second half note of each bar. One, two, three, four.
Kind of fun, right? A little more interesting? Let's do a few more. One, two, three, four. And now, reverse it. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to quiz your knowledge of the distilled melody by playing you a rhythmic variation pattern. You listen, see if you can figure out how to apply it throughout the entire chorus. Okay, here's how it goes. One, two, three, four. Okay, now you play along with that pattern. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And now, reverse it. One, two, three, four. These rhythmic variation exercises are fun, but they don't feel particularly spontaneous. So next, I'd like you to do the distilled melody, but vary the rhythms, mixing the patterns we did before spontaneously along with any other rhythms. I'll play you the rhythm section accompaniment. You improvise your own rhythmic variation. Record it as you go so we can transcribe it afterwards. One, two, three, four. If you weren't fully satisfied with your improvised rhythms, scroll back and practice it again. You can do it hundreds of times, recording it every time. Pick the best recording. Even if you're only 80% satisfied with it, notate or transcribe that 80% good version, then fix the parts you weren't happy with on the written page. Then learn to play that version. This is a fantastic way of bridging the two sides of the coin of musical creativity, improvisation and composition.
This can lead to a beautiful cycle of creativity where you learn to play your written version that you like better, then improvise around that version that you wrote, then record yourself doing those improvisations, then transcribe these new recordings, fixing the things you didn't like, then learn to play that new version, then improvise around that version that you wrote, then record yourself doing those improvisations, then transcribe those new recordings, fixing the things you didn't like, then learn to play that.